Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. What I want to talk to you guys about today is how to avoid snags. You know, everybody gets snagged, right? If you're fishing around heavy cover, there's no way around it. Eventually you're gonna lose some baits. But some people seem to lose a lot more baits than other people. I wanna talk a little bit about why that is and what you can do to avoid it. Uh, basically what brought this on for me was a few weeks ago I had a friend out and we were throwing crankbaits and we were throwing it in some really nasty rock. Uh, he just kept getting snagged. And I told him it's really important that you feel that crankbait through those rocks so that you can avoid the snags. And he said, oh, okay, like it was no big deal. And then continued on with the day. And he did pretty good. But later on that day, he brought it back up and he said, Matt, I wanna tell you when you told me that three or four hours ago, I had no idea what you meant by feel a bait through the snags. So today I wanna to talk to you guys about what that is how simple it is to do, and how much money it can save you. See, a lot of people when they're out fishing, oh, that was a bite, you're not supposed to feel your way through that one. A lot of people just go down the bank, throwing a bait out, bringing it back, waiting for a fish to be yanking on that thing so they know it's a fish and they set the hook and off they go. But there's a lot more to fishing than that, especially if you're finesse fishing or jig fishing, throwing a crankbait, throwing a swim bait, anything that's in heavy cover, particularly rock or wood, where you have the tendency to get snagged a lot. So basically what we do, you throw a bait out, let that thing hit bottom, get down in those rocks. The bank that I'm on right now is chunk rock. It ranges from, I don't know, six inches up to seven or eight feet around. So from little chunk rock all the way to giant boulders. And I'm throwing a shaky head in there. It's a weedless bait but it's going to get snagged up in these rocks. So in order to feel my way through and prevent snags, the goal is to never let it sink all the way into the cracks between rocks. You still want to fish your bait, you still want an effective presentation, but you don't want to get yourself into a position where it's dropping into the holes. So when I fish my bait, the first thing that you want is a rod with a lot of tip section. What I mean by that is this rod, although it's a stout rod, has a lot of play up here at the end. I mean, it's really easy to bend that rod. What that allows me to do is I can pull my bait. And as I pull it, if you're watching that rod tip, it's just ticking, bouncing over those rocks. When I start to feel it getting heavy, so if it's just bouncing along, that's great. But as soon as I start, oh, that was a fish. <laughs> As soon as I start to feel it actually getting a little weight to it, instead of really letting it dig in and get stuck before I address it, I'm gonna shake it up over that rock. So that bait's dragging along the bottom, starts to get up against a rock where it could get wedged in and you just shake it. Pops it up and it gets you over the rock. And you just repeat that all the way back to the boat. You slowly work that bait. When it starts to hang up against a rock, well, pop will get you over the top and you're good to go. You can get through nasty, nasty cover with that. Now the concept is the same, whether you're throwing a little worm, a giant swim bait, a great big deep diving crankbait. Let's say you're cranking and you're burning that bait along and it's starting to bounce and all of a sudden that line feels heavy. You're not stuck yet, but as you're turning that handle, it's getting harder to turn. The reason for that is that your line is rubbing across a rock, but the bait hasn't gotten there yet. It's going to come into that rock and get stuck, but it hasn't happened yet. So when you start to feel that thing getting heavy against that rock, all you do is just slow down your retrieve. So you're cranking hard, you slow down, and as soon as you feel it finally make contact, you just stop. And because you weren't going fast, that crankbait will bump that rock, and float up and then you can continue your retrieve. If you're just grinding away, not paying attention, when it finally gets to that rock, it's gonna wedge in the base and be stuck. You're losing that bait. But if you feel it coming, 
feel that pressure, slow down, and when it touches your weight, it'll pop right back out. Same thing applies to a big swim bait in the rocks. A big, oh, look out. A big swim bait, same deal. It's gonna get up against those rocks and it's gonna start getting heavy before it's actually stuck. And you can shake it up just like the shaky head. Shake it up and over that rock and then continue your retrieve. If you take the time to do that, pay attention to the bottom, feel it through the snags. That's what we're talking about. You will save a ton of money. You can work a bait through big rock, big wood, not lose any baits at all. It'll save you time, it'll save you headaches, and it'll help you catch more fish because you're really tuned into that rod all the time. I hope that helps. If you guys enjoyed the video, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. You know, the biggest thing you can do for tactical, if you really enjoy our videos, share the channel with your friends so they can subscribe to it too. We appreciate your support. Hope you guys have a good day. You know we're not really brand loyal. I pulled out some of the baits that I have confidence in and came up with five different <laughs> brands of worms. Uh, but seriously, these are worms that I have a lot of confidence in. So uh, just running through them really quick. Reaction Innovation Pocket Rocket. Such a stellar, stellar bait. I like to throw it on a shaky head. Uh, it's a bulkier bait and it's, it's thin. Back behind me, there's a bunch of big ponds. You know, Clear Lake, we had a lot of high water this year and uh, they filled with water. Lots of bass back there and bait. Well, now that the water's dropping, it's dropping fairly quick. Um, this is one of the mouths right here. So the fish are pulling out of those ponds. Nice little bass. They're pulling out of these ponds and it's pretty obvious.